live in such a beautiful place. How can we fit into the native landscape? Bees and birds don't see fences. They don't see your backyard versus your neighbors. I don't stop thinking about my yard within the boundaries and I do like to look at what's happening around in neighbors yards and in the park or in the, the local patches of forest. You got to start in a small area and if you can make a difference in that small area, it's very exciting. Backyards and neighborhoods are part of a larger ecosystem. We often use the word connectivity to describe how water and plants, wildlife and people on every piece of the landscape depend on each other. Water enters the ecosystem as rain. It flows on the surface, and below ground is groundwater. Plants take up water from below ground and make nutrients using the sun. Insects and animals use those plants as food, and people need clean water, we use trees for shade and shelter, and we also depend on pollinators and animals for our food. Our homes and our backyards are our habitat, and we share that habitat with the plants and animals and insects that we share this ecosystem with. Decisions you make in your backyard and the neighborhood can affect the health of the habitat we all share. I know that what I do in my backyard is gonna connect to the larger landscape of habitat that we still have in Southwest Portland. Working in natural resources, the issue of connectivity is pretty clear. It makes sense that for us to understand how animals need connected natural areas and how what happens in one place has impacts in another. And I think the same thing is true with neighborhood groups and neighborhood community associations. What you're doing with your group of neighbors connects to what others are doing around you and then the bigger picture in our entire ecosystems. It's not just what happens in my garden, it's what happens in the, in the areas around the neighbor's garden, the park down the road, um, the ditch a few houses away. One way to describe connections on the landscape is through the concept of a watershed. A watershed is the land area that drains to a common body of water, a lake, a stream, a river. Even if you can't see a creek or a river from your home, all of the water that falls on your yard, your roof, your street, will eventually end up in a creek or a river somewhere. A little bit of pesticide or fertilizer or pet waste in your backyard might seem like a small impact on water quality. But if everyone living in a watershed made unhealthy decisions in their backyards, it would have a big impact on this stream. The water quality of a stream is an indicator of the overall health of an ecosystem. And watersheds are a good example of the way that little contributions we each make can add up to big impacts. Over the course of two centuries of increasing human population and development in the Pacific Northwest, we've made big changes to the function of our ecosystems and watersheds. Many of our creeks now flow through culverts and pipes, where they're disconnected from the ecosystem. As we develop, we've added acres of impervious surface in the form of roofs, 
roads, and other infrastructure. These surfaces prevent rain from soaking into the soil where it can be stored as groundwater. This has fundamentally changed how rainwater flows over and under the ground. With an average of 37 inches of rainfall each year in Portland, these changes add up. For every little area that you look at, it doesn't matter what area you look at, just think about three feet of water a year coming off of that impervious surface, that sidewalk, that roadway, that roof, and um, you can see the, the tremendous change that our watershed experiences and the tremendous volume of water that's going to go downstream. There's virtually no runoff in a natural system. And when we send runoff to our streams, we are scouring the streams and reducing habitat and increasing pollution. You know, there's a lot of parking lots out there that can be just managed slightly differently to gain real improvements in water quality. So each person who does something better for the watershed manages their stormwater a little bit better. We get that little incremental improvement. And through time and through a lot of participation, we end up with a positive effect on the environment. We rely on surface water and groundwater for our own health, and we need to make sure that our watersheds are healthy for us to be healthy. One of the biggest human-caused factors affecting water quality and the health of the ecosystem as a whole has been the spread of invasive plants. These human-introduced species promote erosion by forcing out native plants whose deeper roots hold the soil in place. Invasive species spreads, it takes over, um, it outcompetes many of the native species in certain situations, and it, it doesn't provide um, a good place for insects. Our, our native insects are adapted to our native plants, um, so we don't get that insect base, which is that, that primary food level um, that pretty much all higher level wildlife uh, require. Once we remove invasive plants, native ecosystems have a chance to recover. At the foundation of any native ecosystem are native plants. Plants that have evolved in this area and are well adapted to the climate and soil present here. Encouraging native plants is a key step to restoring the natural interactions in our ecosystems. Adding native plants to your backyard is a great way to improve habitat for yourself and wildlife. Our native plants are not only beautiful, but they also require less maintenance and less chemical supplement because they're adapted to local conditions. I can't tell you how amazing it is for wildlife what I find here throughout the year. I have native bees and birds and butterflies that flock to this area of the yard. It's just, it's really great for my kids and for our family to look out the windows of the house and see this. If you see your backyard as part of that whole system, you recognize that wildlife need larger areas than just little spots. They need a corridor to be able to pass through and get their food and water. And so, yes, my backyard is definitely part of the larger habitat. We share our habitat 
with thousands of native wildlife species. They have the same needs as we do, food, shelter, clean water. Seeing native wildlife in our backyards is interesting and fun, but even more so, it's an indicator that we're living in an ecosystem that is healthy for everyone. In both our backyards and our neighborhoods, we have an opportunity to improve our ecosystem as a whole. All over Portland, neighbors are using native plants in their backyards and enhancing habitat for wildlife. There are many resources available to help you enhance these connections in your backyard and your neighborhood. It can be really inspiring to understand the context within which we work because our um, small backyard creek is part of a larger watershed which then uh, flows into the Willamette and the projects that the city is working on in southwest Portland connects with things that are going on in other parts of the city. I believe it's important for people to get involved in the natural habitats around them because it connects them to the landscape a little bit more. It allows them to connect with neighbors that have similar interests, to be engaged in their community, to work towards health of the overall ecosystem. I see positive things that people are doing in their backyards. You know, I see areas where we're getting away from, from lawns and large cement driveways, and, and we are planting trees and native plants and, and providing in all these little individual parcels that we call our own, something bigger that gives back to wildlife and the whole community. Native ecosystems have evolved these interrelationships between plants, soil, and wildlife over thousands of years. When we work with these ecological forces, instead of trying to ignore or change them, we make things easier on ourselves and improve our own habitat. <laughs>